And a very happy Wednesday to you at 12.08 in the West. Talk Radio 790 KABC, The John Phillips Show. Broadcasting live from the Morongo Casino Resort and Spa Living Room Studios. Mr. Randy Wang's at the sports desk in Culver City. John, in an interview with CBS News, Congressman Adam Schiff, who's running to replace Dianne Feinstein in the Senate, was asked if it's weird that he's running for a seat that Gavin Newsom has already promised to appoint if she resigns to a black woman. Uh, And I think that does weigh on the governor. Uh, I think he's appreciative of the fact that having appointed one of our senators, the voters really want to decide this. But at the end of the day, I think Senator Feinstein has made the decision that she's finishing her term. (laughs) He really loves at the end of the day. That is his tick, and he says it constantly. (laughs) How much do you want to bet if Dianne Feinstein were to roll a seven, he's going to pull a Rachel Dolezal? He's going to identify as black? A black woman. Oh, boy. I think he's already working on that transition. What does it go from Adam to Eve? <laughs> that would be my guess. 800-222-KABC is the telephone number 1-800-222-5222. I've told this story before on the air, but I think it's apropos given the news cycle today to revisit the story. As many of you know, when I was in graduate school, I taught school. And one of the things that I would teach at night for extra money was adult education. And when you go to one of these adult education facilities, they have all kinds of different classes. And what you found out real fast was that whatever the name of the class was, the opposite was the reality. I remember one day showing up to the office and getting my folder for the class that I was supposed to teach that day. I wasn't the regular teacher. I was the substitute teacher. And I saw on the folder that that particular day I was teaching the success class. And I thought to myself, finally, I get to teach some people who achieve something once in a while, not the usual group of losers they give me. And then I open up the folder and find out that the success class is, of course, court-ordered. And that was pretty much how it worked. Whatever the name was, the opposite was what I was walking into. In California, in the legislature, we have the same thing going on. We have a public safety committee. And you say to yourself, okay, it's called the public safety committee. They're here to keep us safe and keep the criminals away from us. But Randy, as it turns out, like adult education... The opposite is true. That's right. After a legislative session that saw the Assembly Public Safety Committee block fentanyl bill after fentanyl bill to increase the penalties for the drug dealers that are killing people, including teenagers, the Assembly outdid themselves now. The Public Safety Committee blocked a bill that would increase the penalties and make child sex trafficking a serious felony that would be eligible for strikes. Right now, apparently it's not. And the Public Safety Committee decided to table that for another year because that's not worth bringing up right now. Now, if you're a legislator and you sit on the Public Safety Commission, or committee, I guess I should say, and you wake up in the morning, you have your medium boiled eggs, your black coffee, your blueberries, you take a shower, you throw on your suit and tie, you get in the car... You show up to work and you say to yourself, all right, let's accomplish something today. Today, we're going to run interference for people involved in human trafficking. Yeah, but these members of the assembly are so chicken ass. It's not that they voted against it. They just decided not to vote. And because of the supermajority in that committee, by them not voting and only having two votes from the Republican legislators that brought up this legislation, it died. Okay, clear a couple of things up for me. When you say human trafficking, do all of them that end up getting trafficked end up as sex slaves? Or do they still handcuff some of them to sewing machines so they can make clothing for Kathy Lee Gifford? I believe what this bill was focused on is the child sex trade, is the human trafficking, is the sex slaves. Okay, so we're exclusively talking about children who are being turned into sex slaves. I do not believe this is a sweatshop issue. Okay, so... 
That is the bill that the Assembly Public Safety Committee killed. And as Randy mentioned correctly, they didn't have the cojones to vote against it. They just voted present. So that legislation is DOA. And shockingly, zero members of the Assembly that killed that bill wanted to talk on camera about why they killed that bill. Of course. That's when they run for the elevators and shove the reporters. <laughs> Mia Bonta is on that committee. Of course she is. <laughs> Think about that. You're on the public safety committee. You represent Oakland, one of the most violent places, not just in the state of California, but on planet Earth. Your husband is the attorney general of the state running the California Department of Justice, and you can't vote to make child sex slave trafficking a serious crime? There is an ideology in this wing of the Assembly Public Safety Committee that believes we cannot increase the penalties for anything, that incarceration is not the answer to anything. She's one of the few members of that committee that occasionally gets stopped by the press. The rest of them are pretty quick, but it takes her a while to waddle over to the elevator. (laughs) For more on all this, here's KCRA-TV. California lawmakers today rejected a measure that would make human trafficking of a child a serious felony. Experts say right now those convicted of trafficking people under the age of 17 are able to get out of prison early and serve much less time than what they're sentenced to. Oh, so you're telling me right now under state law, child sex traffickers are eligible for Prop 57. You got to be kidding me. Case Area 3 Capital Correspondent Ashley Zavala explains both sides of this issue and why the lawmaker who wrote this bill was shocked by the vote today. California lawmakers in the Assembly Public Safety Committee today blocked a bill that would have defined human trafficking of a child a serious felony. How is this controversial? I I don't even know why there's a debate going on. Every once in a while you get non-controversial legislation and it just sails through. You're naming a post office, something along those lines. Making child sex trade trafficking a serious crime seems like that's an easy putt. I didn't realize how many members of the assembly were pro-pimp. Well, Mia Bonta does represent Oakland, and that's where the pimps and the prostitutes have taken over certain neighborhoods. This would have made it a strikeable offense, meaning it could put people convicted of trafficking children away for longer if they are convicted of trafficking them again. Right now, those convicted are eligible for early release credits, meaning their sentences can be significantly reduced. So that's another crime that we're describing as nonviolent? Well, and this is one where they probably, if they have access to the Internet when they're in prison, they can keep the operation going while they're behind bars. Supporters say this measure would have changed that. But opponents say more prison time doesn't get to the root of the problem. (laughs) Oh, you've got to be kidding me. If I hear one more person today say root causes. But opponents say more prison time doesn't get to the root of the problem and say there are already laws on the books that can. I would say it does get to the root of the problem. There are certain people who think they can make a living abducting children and forcing them to the sex trade. If we get those people off the streets, that solves the problem. This is what they always do when they want to make a pseudo intellectual argument and make it seem like they're thinking very deeply about the subject and they are very profound and deliberate with what they're doing. We're not going to deal with the problem at hand. We're going to get to the root of the problem. And, of course, all of this psychobabble started with the chief psychobabble expert herself, Kamala Harris. We are doing it. She's still trying to figure out the root causes of immigration. But opponents say more prison time doesn't get to the root of the problem and say there are already laws on the books that can put traffickers away for a significant amount of time. This bill was halfway through the legislative process. It passed unanimously through the state Senate with broad bipartisan support. What? It was only because they browbeat them over and over and over again until the Democrats finally cried uncle. But that means even Scott Pro Pimp Wiener voted yes on this. But the Assembly Public Safety Committee apparently is crazier than Scott Wiener. Do they have a pimp caucus in this body? <laughs> because if they don't, they should have one. And they should all wear purple velour, and they should all carry walking sticks, and they should watch movies from the 1970s. 
State Senator Shannon Grove, who authored the bill, told us she was blindsided by today's vote. You can um, pass a note to a bank um, and rob a bank. You can commit arson, and that's considered a serious felony. But to traffic a minor child in the state of California is not. That's something wrong. I mean, I'm talking 0 to 17, where the average age is 10. And they would not pass this bill. Now, the vote tally was two to zero. No Democrats were willing to vote for this bill, and those two votes came from Republicans. You know what? The, the one thing that has to be abolished is this idea that you can just not vote or vote present, and it doesn't count. You're either for child sex traffickers or you're against child sex traffickers. Who the hell is lobbying against this bill? We need to find out who's running that Jeffrey Epstein estate. Now, the vote tally was two to zero. No Democrats were willing to vote for this bill, and those two votes came from Republicans. This bill is not dead. It's just not moving forward for the rest of the year. This oh, that's a whole other year the pimps can get away with it. Oh, yes. Open for business. Discussions on this at the state capitol can pick up next year. Reporting at the state capitol, Ashley Zavala, KCRA 3 News. Well, if you may have noticed, the Assembly Public Safety Committee is known for blocking measures that would increase prison time, recently rejecting similar measures for fentanyl dealers and domestic violence offenders. The chairman of the committee, Assemblyman Reggie Jones-Sawyer, has promised to work with Senator Grove on this human trafficking bill. And that nut, Reggie Jones-Sawyer, is now running for the city council, apparently, in Los Angeles. Oh, no. He's one yeah, of ours? I Yes, I think he wants that Mark Ridley Thomas seat. Oh, boy. Heather Hutt, save us. So he may be coming to a legislative body near you. Now, as crazy as these people are, the new Speaker of the Assembly, Speaker Rivas, was asked if he plans on making any changes on that committee because they're so bat bleep crazy. But, of course, this being North Korea, he has no plans on changing anything. I know that you've said in terms of this. This was on this weekend's Inside California Politics. I know that you've said in terms of this transition and how you're sort of getting the folks that you want in place in terms of chairmanships and the like. Uh, I want to ask you specifically about the Public Safety Committee because homelessness, housing, crime, fentanyl are top of mind among Californians. Sure. Uh, and the Public Safety Committee has really come under fire over the past few months, accused of killing bills from both Democrats and Republicans dealing with fentanyl. Do you plan to make any changes to chairmanship on that committee? Sure. So I've been very forthcoming with uh, all of m you know, my colleagues and um, uh, throughout this transition um, in uh, uh, telling them that you know, what they could expect, and with media as well, mm -hmm. uh, what they could expect on June 30th was certainly changes to our... So far, we're 30 seconds into his answer, and he has said no words. This guy is not very bright. Certainly changes to our leadership team, which we made, and then, you know, uh, certainly as Speaker, we reserve the right to make additional changes as need be. I'm always going to do what's in the best interest of our caucus and certainly leverage the, you know, the diversity we have within our caucus, as I've mentioned, um, Still not saying any actual words. Nope. Um, and, you know, many of the, uh, you know, uh, lived experiences in, in, in the diverse communities we represent to ensure that they have a voice. Do we have pimps in the assembly? We might. Here in the work that we do um, through our representatives. Uh, and so, um, uh, you know, when it comes to... You know, I know Kamala Harris gets accused all the time of word salad. This is word salad bar. <laughs> this is soup plantation level. Uh, and so, um, uh, you know, when it comes to minimizing the disruption mm -hmm. of this legislative year because of the unique nature of this of this uh, transition being on June 30th, uh, our goal is to finish out this year uh, as we continue to plan and uh, expect uh, all the rest of the changes we need to make to public safety, to uh, other committees uh, throughout the assembly. Um, you know, I'll have more to announce on that as, as, as we close out the year and as we move so into... So nothing in the year. immediate, though? Nothing. No, no plans in the immediate to restructure uh, or change any of uh, uh, the policy committees that, that, that we haven't already made changes to. Then what the hell is the point of having a new speaker? No changes are going to be made to that a-hole committee. But certainly I reserve the right to make those changes um, you know, on an as-needed basis. Do you understand though, the frustration that people have had with the Public Safety Committee Absolutely. just because of the nature of this crisis that is affecting rural, Absolutely. big city, su suburban parts of the state? Certainly. And as, you know, uh, you know, as uh, 
you know, an assembly member uh, from the 29th district representing parts of four counties who are always. Well, once again, saying absolutely nothing. This guy is the king at that. He could just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and not say anything. I'm nostalgic for Tony Rendon. Parts of four counties were. I'm nostalgic for Antonio Viragosa. Parts of four counties who have always had a very productive working relationship with all of our stakeholders within the law enforcement area with, you know, so many constituent groups. Um, uh, you know, I'm very proud of the work we have done thus far within our caucus. You know, I think of uh, some of them are Matt Haney, who has a select committee and has done a lot of proactive work in this area. And this really is, moves more to the point uh, that I made is my priority as being speaker is to create a results-oriented caucus uh, that's going to uh, require a high level of engagement for myself to ensure that we are proactive in addressing... That's not even a real word. No, it's not. ...in addressing these challenges. We know the work environment uh, here in Sacramento, things change very quickly. They evolve very quickly. We need to set up our caucus to be successful and to quickly respond um, and uh, quickly prepare and have a plan uh, when it comes to addressing these issues. In, in the fentanyl crisis, uh, we know, you know, I come from, in, in, in my former job, I was a dean of discipline at a very large high school. Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, worked in uh, all of these discipline issues. Uh, I got to witness first. This is now a full-blown filibuster. It is. And he's acting as if we don't have a problem. Well, when a problem occurs, we'll deal with it. You not only have a problem on your hands right now, you have a full-blown crisis, and that committee refuses to do anything about it. Uh, I got to witness firsthand uh, this uh, drug culture on campuses that is very real and is a threat um, uh, to um, you know, many students across the state. Uh, students that I worked with uh, have been victims of um, you know, overdoses and, and you know, have forced they have lost lives. Um, and, and um, you know, no, as I, I'm that makes it worse if you're not going to do anything about it. Yeah, because you've seen it up close and personal. Um, and, and um, you know, no, as I, I mentioned in the past, no. This guy might um and awe ah more than Barbara Ferrer. How do these people rise into leadership? I can't understand it for the life of me. No community um, is immune to. This is the guy that big time Tony Rendon. No community. Um, is immune to the impacts of this fentanyl crisis. There's a lot that we don't know that we still have to, um, um, you know, understand. Uh, but we need to throw... What don't we know? We pretty much understand what fentanyl's doing to the state. Uh, but we need to throw every single tool at this crisis, and we have to do it urgently. Um, you mean by replacing the head of the Public Safety Committee and passing some of these bills that have bipartisan support to increase the penalties for these killers, these drug dealers? Oh, no, wait, we're, we're not doing that. We're getting the word urgency again, just like we got yesterday from the L.A. City Council when they said that they're not going to fix homelessness anytime soon. We have learned the two most meaningless words coming out of any California politician these days are urgency and accountability. When they say those, they don't mean anything. Um, and that's what you can expect uh, from me moving forward is ensuring that we're bringing people together uh, to find real solutions to these problems and, and certainly engaging all stakeholders, working with the Senate, working with the governor's office. Um, does change, making changes on a committee, uh, uh, you know, make that much of a difference at this moment? Yes. Yes, it does. That's progress. This story that we're talking about right here, the bill passed unanimously in the Senate, and it's this nonsensical committee that killed it. No, I don't think it does. Um, these are discussions uh, that have been occurring for months, uh, but it is something that uh, I am well aware of and something that I anticipate we will tackle in the coming weeks and months ahead. And if it is restructuring committees, then if, if, you know, if that's part of it, mm -hmm. then you know, certainly... Um, you know, uh, yeah, I, I won't hesitate to make all those necessary changes. Who in the Central Valley voted for this dunce? People in the Central Valley have a little more sense than this. But I guess the rest of the state was dumb enough to vote for him to be speaker. When you think it can't get any worse, you end up with this. This guy is full-blown remedial. Salinas, how did you let this happen? And he's not going to turn out of office anytime soon, so we're going to be stuck with him for a while. Yeah, he's brand new. He started in 2018. But right now, it's time to open up the KABC Crime Blotter. 
If the cashier is dummy. Questions? No. And Randy, since it's lunchtime, this edition of the Crime Blotter involves a sandwich shop. This one really hits close to home. This one I take personally because a jackass, a monster of a human being, pulled an armed robbery on the Capriottis in Chatsworth, one of the best sandwich shops around town. And for a long time, the Valley didn't have a Capriottis because the one in Encino went away. And I was so glad when the one in Chatsworth came up, I was ordering from DoorDash when I was eating too much. And now... They've been a victim of an armed robbery, and twice in the last six months, someone broke their windows. And I'm afraid this sandwich shop's not going to last much longer if this keeps happening. Not even a crumb. <laughs> Taking this one hard. They I make a tell. damn good sandwich. And they didn't deserve this. And to add insult to the already injury, when the owner called the police that her employees were being robbed but gunpoint, it took them 48 minutes to show up. <laughs> For more, here is our news partner, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Robbed at gunpoint, captured on surveillance video. A man orders food from a popular sandwich shop, then pulls out a weapon, grabs the cash, and takes off. So not only did he steal their money, but he pretended like he was going to order a sandwich? Did he get the sandwich, too, or just the money? He didn't wait for the sandwich. And you know what? It's too bad. If he would have taken a bite of one of their turkey Thanksgiving Bobby sandwiches, I would imagine he'd change his ways. Think about making an honest living. Maybe getting behind the counter and making some of those sandwiches. <laughs> you know, this morning I was at a Rite Aid, and they had signs all over the store. I guess their computer system was down. So you had to pay with cash for everything. And as I was checking out, and the woman was explaining to me that I needed to pay for my items with cash, I said, you people are very brave dealing with cash in this state. <laughs> How'd she respond to that? She just looked at me very nervously. If the cashier is dummy. And it's not the first time it's been the target of crime. Thanks again for joining us here on ABC7 Hulu and wherever you stream. I'm David Ono. I'm Ellen Leva. Eyewitness News reporter Amy Powell is live in Chatsworth where an owner says it's getting pretty tough to run a small business these days after her restaurant is hit once again. Amy? Ellen and David, this was very scary for the workers at the shop. They weren't harmed, but they were held up at gunpoint, and it was all caught on camera. Yeah, that's trauma. <laughs> Did you see over at uh, Le Petit Fleur on Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood, same thing happened over there, and the owner of the restaurant, I guess, wrestled one of the guns away from one of the robbers because they just came in with guns as everyone was eating their food. Wow, that's incredible. Surveillance video shows the suspect at the counter inside Capriati's sandwich shop in Chatsworth. Can I get to the house? Ah, uh, it's fine, bro. He places an order, then pulls out a gun and tells the clerk to open the register. Why not just get to the point? Why even have the pretense that you're there to order a sandwich? That's just rude. Then pulls out a gun. Not only are you stealing money, victimizing and traumatizing the employees, you're wasting perfectly good bread. They have to go back into the computer and cancel the order. Then pulls out a gun and tells the clerk to open the register. Open it up. Open the register. Open the register. The frightened clerk doesn't have a key, so the suspect yells at another employee. Can you please open the register? Please. I got, I got keys and stuff. Oh, he said please this time, so maybe they'll do it. Okay, well, he's being polite. And he's like, can you please open, can you please open to the person? And she was like, uh, like in shock. So, and then he, he, he. Yeah, it's hard to respond to anybody asking you a favor when they're pointing a gun at you. Can you imagine being the cashier who's standing there, who's the first one to get robbed? He tells you to open up the cash register and you don't have a key. At this point, you don't want to tell answers that will piss him off. I wonder why so many restaurants are going cashless. And then he, he, he brings the gun, you know, he puts the gun and he says, please open the register. The suspect escaped with about $500. That place does well. Not exceeding 950 Not that that matters these days. I mean, we don't hear the people getting caught for bumping off the Gucci in San Francisco. That's right. 
And by the way, if you're thinking about robbing a store and making sure the amount that you take is under $950, if you pull a gun on the cashier, that's still a felony. Capriotti's owner, Brenda Torres, was not at the shop when the robbery happened last Wednesday evening. I'm very upset. I'm very um, stressed. I'm very, like, uh, scared, you know, uh, because now they, they, they just scared to come to work. The store has been vandalized before. A plate glass window shattered on two different occasions. Jeez. <laughs> and that's not a bad part of the valley. Well, it didn't used to be. And my biggest fear is my employees, you know, the safety of my people. Data from LAPD's Devonshire Division, where Capriati's is located, shows that the average number of robberies has remained about the same for the last five years. With the ex- mm, we sure about that? No, it's because people don't even bother to call 911. Or if it takes them an hour to show up, what's the point? With the exception of 2020. Employees call police immediately after the armed robbery, but Torres is frustrated, saying it took them 45 minutes to arrive. That is unacceptable. 45 minutes? We're not talking about a rural part of the state. This didn't happen in Blythe. This happened in the San Fernando Valley. This happened in the second largest city in the country. And it takes them 45 minutes to show up for an armed robbery. I know the LAPD is stretched thin. I know that. But that's completely unacceptable. To arrive. This happened at 8.10 and they come at 8.55. So it's like what it needs to happen. They need to like fire a gun so they can come right away. This is not okay. If only one of those employees got shot, then the cops would arrive in five minutes. I understand that she's very angry right now and she deserves to be. But that's a strange thing to say. To arrive. This happened at 8.10 and they come at 8.55. So it's like what it needs to happen. They need to like fire a gun so they can come right away. This is not okay. This shop opened shortly before the pandemic hit. The best business survived, but now the owner says she is just very worried about safety. Okay, if you live in the West San Fernando Valley, you got to order these sandwiches on DoorDash. I'm not letting this one go out of business. Although, if the robbery happened after the person ordered the sandwich, I wonder if the cashier has PTSD every time someone orders a sandwich. I don't know how you go back to work after you've had a gun pointed in your face, especially for a cashier job. You're only making, what, 17 maybe $20 an hour at best, and you have, the, have to have the thought every day of going back into work that that could happen to you again. And if you call the police, they won't be there for 45 minutes? I don't know how you keep doing that job. My guess is the cashier is going to find a different job. The cashier will be automated. If the cashier is dummy. You can only order on the app, and you won't be able to bring cash. They're going to become a ghost restaurant. DoorDash only. It's the only way you can safely run a business now. So apparently there's drama going on right now in Sacramento. Based on what I'm reading from reporters in the Sacramento Press Corps, Newsom is furious at the Assembly Public Safety Committee for voting down a bill that would make trafficking a child for the purposes of the sex trade a serious offense. He doesn't like the fact that he's running for president and they're creating negative attention that's reflecting poorly on him. So apparently he met with Shannon Grove, who's the state senator from Bakersfield and the author of the bill, and again it passed in the Senate and failed in the Assembly, And he also called the new speaker of the assembly who said that he wasn't going to make any changes on that committee and I'm sure exchanged words with him. Now the speaker saying they're going to try to find a way to get it through. Oh, wow. Stay tuned. It's 1254. This is Talk Radio 790 KABC.